You have heard all about the high return stock investment can offer, but you simply can't find the time to read those complicated financial statements and do the necessary research. So in this video, we will be talking about one of the most convenient but underrated and misunderstood investment. This video is partly sponsored by Skillshare because improving your skill is the best way to make more money to start investing. But more about them later. Unitrust, probably just like me, you have heard many people with different opinions about it. Some who are strong believers and made good returns, and some who lost money investing in it think it's a scam. There are also some who blindly invest in it and they don't even know if they're making money or not because they were told by an advisor or an agent that as long as they invest long enough, the returns will be better than FD or EPF. Lately, there are also some that say unit trust is not worth investing because the fees are just too high and the return is just so so. So must as well invest in ETF, right? Because the fees are lower and the returns are good. Well, that's not entirely true. If you don't believe me, here's proof. This is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. The annualized performance for the past five years is 17.25% per year. If you invested 10,000 five years ago, today you have $22,159. That's a pretty good return, right? In comparison, here is a unit trust fund, which invests in the US stock market as well, and it's called the Franklin US Opportunities. Their annualized performance, 22% a year. So if you invested 10,000 five years ago, today you have 27,547 bucks. Yep, that's $5,000 more or 20% more compared to the Vanguard ETF. Yes, no doubt you pay a little bit more fees compared to the Vanguard 500 ETF, but it comes with 10% more returns per year. So. What do you think? Are you willing to pay a little bit more fees for 10% more return? On the other hand, if you invested in this fund, which also invests in US equities, the five years annualized return is only around 7%. Now, in this case, it's probably much better off placing your money in a passive ETF like Vanguard S&P 500. The point I want to make is this, every unit trust is different even if they invest in the same asset class, like the example we showed you earlier. Both are unit trusts managed by professionals and are invested in the US stock market. But the results can be very different. And this is why many people get confused when investing in unit trusts. This video is to help you to understand what unit trust is and how to go about with it. Oh yeah, if you're wondering what's the difference between mutual fund and unit trust, in Malaysia, it means the exact same thing. It's confusing, right? I know, but here's how it works. If you're already familiar with how it works though, just skip this part here, go to the next section by selecting it in the menu bar below. So let's say an asset management company noticed that many people are interested to invest in US technology stocks recently. So they decided to create a fund called the US Technology Power Fund. And they allocate $100 million into the fund and then appoint a professional fund manager, giving him or her a very specific instruction to invest in US technology stocks. The next step is to get investors to invest Best. But they know not everyone has $100 million, right? So they subdivide the fund into 100 million units, which is each unit now worth $1. That way, any investor who want to invest in US technology stocks can buy into the units of this US technology power fund according to their affordability. Then when this fund makes money through its investment, the profit will be equally distributed to the unit holder. In return, the asset management company will make money from charging the unit holders a management fee. Certainly, they there are a lot more procedures and details that we have skipped here, but that's good enough for the purpose of this video. The example given earlier was a fund to invest in US tax stock. In reality, it can be used to invest in anything from stocks to bond or a mixture of different assets. Some funds have a broader investment objective like investing in US equities or bond in general. Some have a much more specific objective or themes like investing in emerging markets healthcare fund, China A shares or high yield bond. Every asset management company has multiple funds under their management and each of these funds will have a different objective and characteristics. For example, Afin Huang Asset Management is the company but they have many different funds under their brand. 
such as the Afin Huang Equity Fund, Afin Huang Select Asia X Japan Quantum Fund. Although both are under the Afin Huang brand, their investing objectives and strategy are very different. Therefore, it will bring different returns for their investors even though they are under the same brand. The point is when someone tells you that Kananga investment is good or public mutual is good, it is actually a meaningless statement. What is important is actually the exact fund. The brand is no use. And here is where I see many people invest blindly according to brand. Simply because they believe that the brand is reputable or so big, they think that when they invest in it, they will sure make money. Well, that's actually a very wrong idea. If you have been investing in Unitrust simply based on that information, I'm not surprised that you're actually losing money. Or if you've made money, I dare say that you're actually just lucky. So, Unitrust is actually not an asset by itself. It is a fund that holds assets. So when you want to invest in Unitrust, you need to have a clear idea on what is your own personal investment objective. Only then, you can correctly choose the right Unitrust to invest in. For example, if you are investing because you are nearing retirement and you want to create an income to supplement your expenses when you retire, then investing in a unit trust that invests into assets such as bonds or dividend stocks will be the right choice. However, if you invested in a high yield bond fund or growth equity fund, you may be disappointed with the results. The most important thing when it comes to investing is money. You can't invest if you have no money, right? And like I've always said, the best way to make more money is to improve your value by equipping yourself with new skills. So allow me to have a minute to tell you about our sponsor Skillshare. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes that you can learn from. If you are thinking of starting a freelance business to make some extra money, well, you can check out this video, The Freelancing Guide, The Secret to Strong Client Relationship, to give you some useful guidance on how to build a successful side hustle to make more money. If you'd like to improve your value and support our channel, check them out in the link below. The first 1,000 of our subscribers who use my link will get one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. Now, how do you choose a unit trust fund that is suitable to yourself? The first step is to identify your personal investment objective. That one, you have to figure out why you want to invest and what's your risk tolerance. The next step is to learn how to read an important piece of document, the prospectus. A prospectus is a document detailing the investment objective and strategies and other important information. Yes, there are many pages which you are encouraged to read all of it, but if you want a shortcut, at least read the fund where you can find information about the investment objective, the type of assets they are invested in, and the investment policies and strategies. Today, you can find the prospectors of a fund online easily. For example, you can just go to FSM1, type in the name of the fund that you're interested in, and on the information page, you will find link to the prospectors of the fund. Then, the next piece of document you have to read is the fund fact sheet. It is a basic document that gives you an overview of the fund. Often it's a good place to start when you want to learn about fund. In the fund fact sheet, they will describe the investment objective in short and the category of type of fund it is. Typically, words that you will see will be equity, bond or mixed asset. Equity will mean this fund is invested in the stock market. Bond will mean that this fund is invested in bonds. Then mixed asset basically is a combination of stocks and bonds. You will also commonly see words such as growth or income as well. Growth fund will be investing in equities that are slightly more aggressive and can lead to capital appreciation in a shorter period of time. Income fund, on the other hand, will invest in assets that can generate income. On the fund fact sheet, you will also find information about the fees. Sales charge is the upfront charge that is paid one off when you invest initially. This amount is somewhat flexible actually, depending on the channel that you are using to invest. If you're investing through an advisor or an agent, the charges are likely higher, usually around 5% compared to an online platform like FSM1, which will charge less than 2%. So if you want to know about FSM1, you can always check out about them in the link below. The annual management fee and the annual trustee fee are annual charges recurring yearly on the management of the fund. Often, it will be around 1% to 2%, depending on the fund itself. Another important information you will find is the historical performance of the fund. Although past results don't guarantee future performance, I personally like to use this as a guideline to project the potential returns moving ahead. Regarding this, you will find a graph with two lines, usually one line indicating the benchmark that the fund is measured against, and then there's also another line that indicates the fund performance. The idea here is to tell you 
the performance of the fund compared to the benchmark. So what it tells you is like how this fund is performing. Is it performing better or lousier than let's say KLCI or S&P 500? The more important information you want to pay attention to is the annualized return of the fund. This will give you a better guideline on what to expect on the performance of the fund moving ahead on a compounding basis. For example, this fund has a five years annualized return of 11.9%. This means the average return in a compounding manner for this fund over the past five years was 11.9% per annum. Some fun fact sheets have this number readily available while some don't like this one here. Well, anyway, if it's not available, you can always easily get this number from FSM1 website when you search for the fund there. On the top right page of the fund, you will notice a big number that indicates a three-year fund volatility factor. This number tells you the risk of this fund. For example, this fund has a three years annualized return of 10.8% and the FVF is 12.3%. This means that the fund's return will potentially fluctuate between negative 1.5% and 23.1%, which is 10.8% plus or minus 12.3%. The higher the number for the FVF simply means higher risk. So, when you choose a fund, you don't want to only look for past returns. You also want to pay attention to the risk of the fund. Only invest in a fund that's within your risk appetite. No one wants to lose sleep over their investment. One good rule of thumb is, when you have a longer time horizon for your investment, you should be able to take more risks. But when you have a shorter time horizon for your investment, you should take less risks. Therefore, it is very important that you know your investment objective to begin with when you choose a fund to invest. Finally, there are also information such as the top holding of the fund, geographic and asset allocation, and so on and so forth. Anyway, if you want us to do an in-depth walkthrough on how to read a fun fact sheet, comment fun fact sheet below. And if there are more than 200 of you by next week, then we will do a fun fact sheet walkthrough video. Running through this two piece of document will help you to have a better understanding of the kind of funds that you are investing in or help you to choose a suitable fund for yourself. Unitrust is a convenient investment tool that can generate great returns if you know how to choose a suitable one. And once you're familiar with how to do it, it will only take you about 15 to 20 minutes every few months just to get updated and properly do some realignment and balancing to ensure that you can reach your investment objective. Just remember this one thing, the brand don't matter. What matters is the unit trust fund that you are invested in. And these days, if you do not want to pay more in terms of sales charge, you can always use online platforms such as FSM1, which has a lower fee when you invest through them. So check out the link below if you want to get a lower fee. Anyway, before we end this video, here is a checklist for you. 